What is up, Shark Nation? Luke Curry here. Um, your co-host, uh, Mark, is in Glenageary still. We are on Zoom. Uh, I think going forward, we might be doing this uh, Zoom stuff a lot more. We're covering a lot of ground, Mark. What do you think? Yeah, I think people seem to like it as well. We're, we're obviously uh, trying to push the YouTube channel now. And I think it just works really well. The setup when you're, when you're doing video is, is quite elaborate. Uh, we, had a, we had a multi-camera situation there and it was... <laughs> Yeah. It was difficult to say the least, but Zoom kind of sorts all that out for you and does the kind of single face to camera, which is, is quite cool. Yeah, exactly. And we've got uh, Kareem on the on the line here. Uh, uh, Kareem Mustafa, how are you doing, Kareem? What's up, guys? Yeah, all good, all good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Welcome. delighted to have you here. We're just getting into video, like we were saying, so we thought we'd get the expert on and see what the story was here. Uh, oh, just I don't, to- <laughs> don't know about that, but we'll see. <laughs> Just to give an introduction to Kareem, uh, Kareem used to work in HubSpot uh, a few years ago, but now he's left HubSpot and he's doing his own thing. Um, it is called Tribe Tactics, which is the name of the company. Um, so we're going to dig into Kareem's story as well as what he's doing with uh, video marketing, um, how he's serving his customers, and hopefully learn some stuff along the way. Um, so Kareem, why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the business first? How would you describe the business uh, to our listeners? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, I guess thank you for uh, for having me on the show. Um, I'm a fan of of, of the uh, the show, and I saw all the guests that you guys have had before, so it's awesome to see. Uh, yeah, basically with uh, with Trap Tactics, what we do is we help companies uh, create their own original series. So, if you think of like a Netflix original series, imagine having your own original series for the accounting space, or for the construction space, or the B two B, you know, whatever B two B space you might be in. And so we help them create these episodes and then take each episode and chop it up into tons of smaller video snippets, but also like audio image and written content as well. Cause we figured it's an effective way to create content. It's kind of a cool, cool and different way to create binge worthy content, so to speak, but at the yeah. same time, the efficiency of creating something long form and getting a ton of assets out of it. It's so interesting for us right now, because this is, Although I know YouTube's been around, uh, around for a long, long time and people have been watching videos, but it seems like there's been a shift in the last, I don't know, year, two years or something like that into it's, I don't know about you guys, but it's all I want to watch. I don't want to, like, I used to read a lot of blogs. I used to read, like, you know, that type of content as well. And I still do, but now it's, if it's, uh, if it's, a, <laughs> if uh, the video can just kind of beam it into my, into my mind, that's what I'm really looking for here, you know? Um, so that's it's really interesting that you're doing that and i guess a lot of companies they don't really have the in-house expertise for for doing that uh generally so are you targeting companies like i said like accounting firms maybe in that from the kind of uh, the older uh, older industries or more established industries Who, who's the target market yeah it's a good question um to be honest i think um we're still trying to get better at that right now where we figured out uh you know the area where people could really use um, you know, the most uh, help or really could grow the most um, is in just B2B uh, tech, like software companies in general. Um, yeah. Any companies that, you know, that have like a considered sales cycle where you don't just, you know, they don't just pick up the phone and buy something, but really they have to research, um, you know, all, all, the, all the stuff that, you know, that you guys teach at, at HubSpot, I suppose. Um, and it's, it's just a matter of, you know, using that as a vehicle for them to tell their story better and to do it in a cool and binge worthy way. That's, that's really cool. And I was, I was thinking about this as well. The, it's for those companies who do have to tell a bit of a story to, uh, to sell their product. I think I work with a lot of those companies as well. And with some of my partners, we're trying to get them to, uh, you know, tell their story in a better way rather than just like the, the landing page is great. But like I said, if they're going to have to dig in and get to know you a little bit better, video is the best way to do that. Do you guys actually create the videos or are you taking like long form videos uh, and then making kind of bite-sized uh, kind of assets there. What's the, what's the process? Yeah, so both of those things that you said, uh, if you already have content, um, you know, existing content, we can take it, we can chop it up, get the most out of it. Um, alternatively, if you are looking to use this opportunity to create a brand new original series, um, we can share with you ideas and how, I mean, speaking in a remote environment, share with you ideas and how you can get like great quality, you know, uh, video and audio recordings from the comfort of your home, you know, using stuff that you have lying around pretty much. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, obviously in normal times, yeah, we would, we would play a part in, uh, in, in filming and producing those shows as well. Okay. So, so you get to kind of t- tap into your own creativity there as well, I guess. This is part of the, the driving thing for you. Are you 
big on video and uh, all that kind of production stuff as well? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess it's just a matter of, um, like, we're just good at noticing things and we work with a lot of partners as well when it comes to, to filming the actual content. So, so we wouldn't okay. film it like directly, directly, but rather we would work with, uh, film partners who would do that. We would like to own more of like the creative elements around like, um, you know, planning the actual series and actually tie, bridging the gap between how do you do something that's super cool, but could still have a positive, you know, um, bottom line impact as well as on revenue. And me being able to get to a stage where you can actually measure sort of like the revenue per episode uh, on and on. Nice. Okay. So that's a big, that's a big step forward as well. So Mark, when you, when you guys are doing your uh, marketing for Darwin Hawkins, is there any element of video that have you guys thought about that? Is that something that, you know, that we could work on? Yeah, I think, I think everybody thinks um, of doing like a, almost like a, a how to or a trailer kind of video as to who the company is and then kind of plans it in their head and talks about it and then don't action it because it just seems like something that, you know, Google does or Facebook does or, you know, a big company. It seems like almost too far fetched to do it properly. Like everything I do, I want to do it properly. I don't want to do a, you know, a a bad job, especially something like that, which is essentially selling. It's, it's an advertisement for your company. Um, I think it would be super beneficial for us. And it's something probably that we, we will do, and in previous kind of companies that I've worked in, it's been talked about, but it just, it got quite elaborate and, and there was talks of using drones and stuff like that. And then it just, it just fell by the wayside. It seems, quite, it, easy it, to do badly. Sir, huh? it seems quite easy to do a bad job at, at, at video stuff. You know, if it's, you know, with, uh, you know, cutting to a PowerPoint and back to people sitting there. Uh, in an office setting. I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of videos that don't make me want to buy stuff. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I've done, I've done rec- like recordings of um, like nationwide uh, on RTE. So they came out to the house and, and the job and we spent the whole day and it was like, I was like, oh. this is great. I'm going to get, get a half hour segment on nationwide and RTE. And it turned out to be, I think it was eight minutes, but it was or like eight great minutes. But I just thought, Jesus, that must, it seems quite hard. So it's obviously easier than you think, Kareem, is it? Yeah, I mean, in, in a weird way, guys, like what we're learning is that the more, um, you know, the, the more that you know you kind of do something that's more natural, the, the more it resonates with people. Or to say that another way, uh, going for perfection, which is obviously like a myth, um, even, even if we were to, able to create the most perfect, like whatever, you're not really going to get a lot of buying into it because, you know, it's not really relatable. It's something that's mm-hmm. perfect. is not really relatable. And so um, these days, even when we try and do like our own videos, like we try and not overthink it. I used to overthink videos like crazy because I'm like um, a bit of like an introvert and I keep like overthinking things. And, you know, for every one video, there's like a hundred thoughts that kind of went into it before actually facing my fears or whatever. Um, and so we realized that when, when you actually just do, you know, something naturally or on camera and include the mistakes, not on purpose, but you just kind of, you know, let it flow as such. Um, first of all, you get better with time. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but you do, you really do get better with time. You can't help but get better with time. Um, but in the same time, uh, these little nuances uh, or mistakes or even little ums or whatever it is actually makes it easier for people to relate to you. And they're like, you know what? I can actually see myself in, in him or her or what have you. So, Uh, that's one thing that we've noticed the other thing as well is that like all the professional gear and all that obviously it still has um and brings a lot of great value but ultimately like a lot of people are creating you know videos with with their phones these days and phones are not getting worse like they're getting a lot better in terms of quality and now there's become it's become a cultural statement almost to purposely you may have like all the the cool kind of like production cameras around like we see a lot of companies do that and they purposely ditch all that to record something on their smartphone because it is, it's, you know, you're, you're really in tune with the culture when you do something like that. Um, again, it depends on like the industry that you're in, but in many cases, like that's really, um, that's really like what we're learning and what we're seeing. Um, even, even like with remote content, a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't know about that. I guess we'll just wait till, you know, things go back to normal, which, you know, newsflash is never going to happen, but like, let's wait till things go back to normal and we'll just get like proper, you know, gear or what have you. But, Again, like, you know, remote content as well and remote video is something that everyone pretty much is doing these days, that it's become the new sort of like standard. 
And again, it's a cultural statement to, to, to do those. Um, I mean, we've seen a lot of great companies even like make product announcements using like a quick like um, selfie video or what have you. When back in the day, it would be like a promo and it would be a big deal and press releases and all that. Uh, these days, it's just a lot more casual. And I think that's what people like. People are just tired of overly like professional things. They're like, listen, just tell me what it is. Just get to the point and, yeah. and build some sort of relationship with me, I suppose. That's, that's really interesting as well, because I think, uh, I, was th- I haven't said this to you, Mark, yet, but I might send over, we might, on our YouTube, we might uh, publish uh, some bloopers from my intros the other day. So um, we, me and Mark, right, we've been trying to... I got to see that. <laughs> we got this, uh, we had this uh, idea, we did a podcast a little while ago, and it was one of our more popular ones, and it was called uh, Batchwork, Not Patchwork. And we were talking about doing a lot, a lot of things in, uh, in batches rather than, you know, just as for a... Uh, productivity tool um so i'm batching all of these uh these intros to the videos that we're chopping up um and the amount of uh false starts the amount of effing and jeffing i don't know if it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it gets pretty raw there mark but um i think we might we might do like a, a like a like a, a combination of all the bloopers and just use really loud uh, bleeps and stuff like that kind of like as a comedy thing to show people that like you said does, it doesn't have to be completely polished and I maybe that, that might make us a little bit more relatable if you see me um, losing my mind over and over again what do you think Mark? yeah I think pe- people want to see the real st- first of all people like to see a story I mean research shows that you know tell a story is the best way of you know selling any product or, or service but I think people and, and and it's the honesty that that I respect, like I would love to see kind of bloopers of, of, you know, like what you were just saying. I think when something's so polished, it's almost like you can't trust it because they're hiding everything and it's just too polished. So I say you can definitely be too polished, but then again, you can like, it can be done badly as well. So it has to be done right. And I suppose that's where you guys come in. Where did you, where did you get the idea to, to start the company? Where did it, where did it come from? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I have no idea, to be honest. Like we, we, we just noticed a trend that was going on, and um, I guess you know one of the things was uh, so we 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 follow like a lot of different people, but one of the guys would be Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, if if you guys if you guys know him, and yeah, he's like a big kind of like social media influencer and all that, right? So. Uh, we thought it was pretty cool what he was doing because he'd create something once and chop it up. But everybody knows what the story is. Like there's obviously a team behind him that, that's dedicated to that. And it was always like, I think a lot of people would know that. Uh, we understand that as well. And so we're like, well, it, it was just a, a random thought, but we were like, well, what happens if you don't have that team? What if we could be that team for hire, so to speak, and do it as like a subscription or whatever, where it's like cancel any time and you can get just kind of, you know, record something once in-house because, you know, it's, it's you, it's, you're not hiring actors on your behalf. It really is you. But now we can kind of take that hour and turn it into a month, you know, of, of, of content as such. Um, but like most ideas, like it happened by accident and it wasn't, um, you know, it, it took us a while to like really summarize what, what it is. And I think that's um, like, you know, Mark, like you're a business owner as well. Um, you probably know that the difficulty of like being able to, pitch something in a very succinct and like, you know, concise way. So uh, it's, it's something that we had to go through as well. So interesting because that's something that we don't really think about when we look at these um, kind of social media uh, business gurus for want of a better word, but you know, uh, personalities. Um, these guys have so much content that's pumping out the whole time. They must have a team uh, behind them, you know, chopping it off, making it, you know, putting context to it and everything like that. So it's really interesting. I wondered when you, when you were at HubSpot and you were working with, uh, you know, helping partners succeed, all that type of stuff. Um, would, was there any other partner doing this? Was there a complete gap in that? Like, do you know any kind of marketing agency that's specializing in that? Cause I haven't really come across that. Yeah. So um, with, with my particular portfolio and the, the one, the agencies that I was aware of, um, not not really um and even even like with um you know it, it, it's yeah i mean it's a bit it's a bit weird for for an agency to do because it's just something that's um yeah it's very specific um and a lot of um, agencies naturally like to cover like a lot more a lot more things we we were weird in the sense that we just wanted to do one thing and just you know focus on doing one thing right um and, and not you know do like 
uh, like we're not an agency. It's just a subscription service, you know, subscription box, you know, month on month. Okay. Um, so that's the, the business model. Is It's not even like big consultancy packages. It's literally you get, this is a subscription every month. You pay X, you get a certain amount of hours. Is that how, how that works? Yeah, exactly. You get, you get, um, yeah, it took us ages to come up with the business model, but uh, basically like to put it uh, simply, it, you, it's kind of like going to the arcade. You get, you buy a bunch of credits every month and you just, you can use these credits to purchase like video content or audio or image or written content. And every month you just decide on the fly with your team, right guys, we need five videos and five articles this month or next, next month we need, um, you know, 25 videos and, and two podcasts and, you know, it's almost like a restaurant order in that regard, but like it kind of gives people that flexibility. So it's not like per hour or anything like that. You have those credits that you could really do, um, you know, what, what you want with them. And, you know, one, one of the things that, um, that I really love um, comes from, from Seth Godin. He kind of like inspires a lot of our thinking, Seth Godin. And he came across, or he, he, he came up with, um, with a concept. I, I forgot the, uh, the name for it. He usually has like cool names for different concepts that he comes up with, but something along the lines of, Hey, like find out uh, if you want to, if you want to innovate in your space, figure out, first of all, pick another industry that's as far as possible from, you know, what you uh, are doing. So in, in our case, it was like arcades, right. And, you know, figure out who's the absolute best at that and why they're succeeding at that. And then push yourself to creatively figure out a way that you can kind of almost take that innovation and apply it back to your industry. So, I mean, uh, a, more, uh, a more fun example would be, for example, um, looking at like Henry Ford's like assembly line with the cars and all that and applying that, like how sushi restaurants have applied that, right? Like Yo Sushi and other guys who kind of have the sushi belt, uh, you know, kind of, kind of like an assembly line, you could argue. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's kind of like what, what makes things interesting, you know, as opposed to being like, right, how do we be cheaper or how do we, or how do we do more? It's in our experience, because maybe because we're not that smart, but we're like, how can we do less? But how can we do it in a way that is um, totally like left or hopefully totally like, you know, separate or left field from everybody else so that it has a chance of surviving, especially when you're like a tiny startup, you know? I love the idea of taking, taking what they're doing in another industry, like you said, and applying it to yours. Sometimes, like especially, uh, not so much now, but when I was, I was building this new channel in HubSpot. Um, I met with a huge amount of uh, amount of like IT um, partners, um, and we we settled on the ones that we thought were best for for HubSpot. But I met so many, and they were say if they were a Google reseller, and I would say, okay, well, like why why would people buy from you guys instead of just buying from Google? You know, they can do that, right? And then uh, a lot of the times they're just like, oh no, we'll just well, you know, we they just buy from us and they could buy from someone else, but it's the same thing. So we just try to get there first. And I was just like, okay, if you're like a me too business like that, it's going to be so difficult to scale that because it's, uh, you know, like another thing that Seth Godin uh, talks about is uh, sort by price. If you're in the sort by price business, um, it's, it's, you know, a race to the bottom. So these guys are, so, you know, they're getting probably, it's your, if you're selling Google, like G suite, you're probably getting like five euro commission uh, per seat or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, per month so you're kind of growing a book that way but because these guys aren't innovating so much um like they keep on having now they're accepting three euro per seat two euro per seat they're giving it for free just with a little bit of consulting do you know what i mean so it, yeah, it's yeah. Eating away their uh, their whole business model so it's really interesting so something that we'll we might uh tell the the shark listeners out there to have a think about their own business and see if you can apply what's working somewhere else uh to that so it's really interesting too let me this is one thing I, I, you know that was really on my mind when I when you um, uh, were kind enough to to comment on our our uh, our last uh, our last podcast with Graham. Shout out to Graham if he's listened to uh, listened to this. Uh, we're big fans still, um, but the a lot of people in HubSpot. Um, there's a lot of kind of entrepreneurial vibes there, even though it's kind of a big company. It still feels a little bit startupy. You know, uh, we're talking about a four billion dollar company. So it's not obviously a startup anymore, but uh, a lot of people want to go do their own thing. Uh, but a lot of people don't, uh, like I've talked to so many people in HubSpot who have this idea and then a year later, they're still here, all the type of stuff. So what was the, the trigger for you to say, this is, this is a big enough opportunity for me? Was it a big enough opportunity for you that you couldn't let it go? Or 
was it that you always wanted to do this and you know staying uh in hubspot wasn't kind of in line with who you wanted to be what was the trigger yeah man look that's such a deep question i need to think for a second <laughs> <laughs> i think um I'm dropping an I, was in, I, was in Hub, I was in hubspot for about like maybe two just under three years i want to say two somewhere between two and a half and three years uh hubspot by like hands down is the best company that i've like worked for um, the best company that I've worked for, so to speak. And I've learned so much in HubSpot. Uh, I continue to follow HubSpot. We obviously, like our business is, um, like we use HubSpot ourselves and all that. Um, I think it's, you know, it, it, it's, you know, and I had a, you know, promotion track, blah, blah, all that. Like I, I had every reason to stay. That's the point I'm trying to make. I had mm-hmm. every reason to stay. And so it wasn't HubSpot. It was me uh, <laughs> in the sense that, you know, uh, me and my co-founder is also my brother. Like we just felt, you know what, um, worst case, and I'm speaking freely with you guys, worst case scenario, you can go back and get another job. Best case scenario, you can create jobs, which would be pretty cool. And you get to like kind of do something that's, that's new and you get to say, Hey, I know it's not much, but, but we, we, we made this, we built that, um, you know, or again, as that golden reference, like we made art here, we kind of did something different. Um, to be brutally honest with you, when we left, we thought, oh, yeah, we'll just do an agency because it's all we knew. It took us about two or three months before we quickly were like, actually, agency is the last thing we should be doing in our case because um, we were just surrounded by agencies. And I know for a fact how, uh, you know, I, I know how crowded the space is. I know how there's so many successful agencies over there. What could we possibly add to you know, to, to do something different. Like we just wanted to, um, you know, we, we, as soon as we came up with that idea, again, it's by chance, but the more we notice stuff, the more we increase our chances, I suppose. Um, so we noticed stuff where we stumbled enough that we came across that. Um, but yeah, man, ultimately, like um, when we left, we had no plan. We just thought we will do something like an agency type thing. That's yeah. as much as we had figured out. Um, didn't particularly have like, that much like savings um i was actually newly married like um less than a year nice. <laughs> but when i did that so you can imagine how that went but uh yeah no, I like uh, you kind of lock it in and then do whatever you want i like that uh i like that move <laughs> yeah exactly yeah sorry uh, it's easier, but, uh, easier to ask for forgiveness than ask for it. no but I, I did get my wife's like blessing obviously and all that but um yeah i i think it's for me it was for me and my co-founder it was just a matter of like you know what let's just uh, let's just jump and do it and see uh, what happens. Worst case scenario, you can say, oh yeah, I worked in these companies um, uh, and I, you know, I'll just put it on my resume and then go back and doing it and go back and, and apply again. Uh, but thankfully, like we're in a position now where we're trying to create like more, um, you know, opportunities for prospects and customers and also for new people that can join our team, you know? How amazing. Mark, just to give you some context. Um, so Kareem's, I guess a day job in HubSpot was to to ensure the success of uh, our agency partners. So he would have had a, a good insight into the industry, see what's out there, all that type of stuff. And to hear that he was pivoting after a couple of months um, is kind of a nice uh, warning, the wrong word, but a nice uh, bit of feedback from somebody in the field uh, that maybe a lot of the people in HubSpot who are thinking about maybe doing their own uh, agency. Um, I know there's a lot of them out there that might be maybe you know take heed that warning and say okay how are we going to do something different um like i said if you want to be in two years time if you want to be in a position where you can uh start to grow and, and start to really uh, have an impact um having something a little bit different uh, is the way to go there for sure um okay cool so the what we're trying to do here as well kareem we're trying to make the like we're trying to make the podcast a little bit more kind of actionable that's kind of one of our things we had a, a chat a little while ago i'm trying to make it you know, something that people can really dig into. Um, if you had to say, if we were a couple of people that came in and we had a, a like accountancy firm, or maybe not. let's let's you. I was going to say the same. Sorry, Luke. Let's use my business as an example. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, like a, a recruitment business um, in an industry that isn't a particularly kind of like tech heavy. They a lot of their a lot of their businesses come from. Uh, like networking stuff like that what would be like the first like maybe three or four steps they take in order to you know make a make a good a good go with this uh video marketing stuff yeah there's a um there's an amazing book that i love uh that's very very skinny uh but it's but once you read it you're like this is like 
this is like one of the most insightful books ever. Um, it's a very underrated book in my opinion. It's called Mastermind Dinners. And it's written by, um, I can't believe I forgot the guy's name now, but yeah, Mastermind <laughs> Dinners. He's the only one who wrote the book anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's that, sorry? I was going to say people can get it on, on Audible as well, our new sponsor. Anyway, go on. We'll, we'll put yeah, it in the show. There you go. <laughs> Um, but basically, uh, yeah, mastermind dinners was basically a, a concept that this guy has created where he would basically get a lot of, um, influential people, you know, that were way above his like, um, level or whatever. And he would kind of like host dinners, pay for the dinner and basically be responsible for getting all these people together and connecting them as such. Um, and then he gets the benefit as the host of like, Hey, well, I'm the one who kind of connected you guys. So. So that's, that's his end, so to speak. And many of the people that he's ended up connecting went on to do amazing things that the least they could do was to help this person, you know, and, and, and kind of, you know, give, give back to, to that person in many ways. Um, and yeah, this person now is like a very famous, uh, uh, you know, CEO, uh, you know, like uh, multimillionaire, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, he's, he's, he, he's done very well for himself. And it's all because of the simple concept. And it's all about, to me, the way I interpret that is he co-created something with his community. And the, I guess from, a, from an actual point of view, like one way that we could do that from, uh, you know, in, in a, in a COVID-19 friendly kind of way or social distancing way, um, and it's completely free as well, is to actually create all, the, create, you know, a list of all the different people that are, um, you know, meaningful to you in your industry or people that are looked up to in, in a specific industry or a specific space, let's say the accounting space, um, and actually find a way to, to really find the commonality between all of them and to actually build a show or a series around that. Because um, this way, even if you haven't necessarily had the chance to meet this person before, this could be an amazing opportunity for you guys to co-create uh, content together and hopefully for you guys to, to add value to them. I mean, you guys are adding tremendous value to me now by allowing me to come onto your platform. Imagine if you're building a platform in, let's say, you know, for the accounting space and kind of doing that as a show and inviting a lot of people that, would, that, that your end customers would care about and finding a way that you can really build a cadence of episodes and, and, and content with them such that naturally when the content goes live, you can you know, guess who's going to be the first person to share it as such. Um, it's a great way to really network virtually, but in the same time, to not just network one to one, but almost network like one one to many. If I if I'm making sense, so yeah, yeah. that that would be the first practical thing I would say, which is step one: figure out what industry you're in. Step two: figure out who are like the top ten to twenty people that are like thought leaders. Up. Thought leaders, exactly. Yeah, thought leaders, or um, you know, or people who are influential in that space mm -hmm. in general, and then kind of reverse engineer it and. You use the you use the fact that oh yeah well I already have person A that you've clearly heard of on the show so it'd be great to have you on that show as well uh, and to really use that as a way to build up like additional credibility by association but also just to add a lot of value to them and the audiences that are tuning in. I think that's super. They, Mark, like you could do like someone like you could do that with even uh, your clients. You could say okay we want to showcase the type of places is to work, you know, when you come along with us, you get, you know, well, you get access to the show that we're building. That's going to be something that's going to be evergreen. People will be able to see what it's like to work here. Um, you know, we'll put a lot of, of our own branding on it, you know, so everybody wins, but it's like Kareem saying it's a real co-creation, you know? Yeah. Uh, and, and would, well. you, would you, would you, would you get multiple, uh, you know, thought leaders from multiple companies together on the one kind of Zoom call. You know the way, like in a, um, you'd, like you'd have a an event where you'd have say four panel guests, and they might be say accounting, for example, head of finance, you know, chief risk officer in a, in a bank, and then you'd have Q and A. You could actually do a virtual. Could you do a? Are you saying do a virtual kind of conference like that? and then use that as content as because the amount of them that happen in Dublin in all industries and they're not recorded. We had a big, huge event to launch our business um, last a April, not mm -hmm. just gone the year, the year before in the Western hotel. Uh, amazing venue. Uh, great guests, James Camp, Dragon Stan, our chairman and um, lots, lots of great speakers. And I, it was an afterthought. I was like, should have videoed that. 
Yeah. And I just thought we had we had so much going on that we never did it. But I'm raging we never videoed that. All that content, valuable content, and everybody on the night was saying like they learned so much. Yeah. Um, but it's gone. Hundred <laughs> well, percent. Well, you know, it's yeah. I mean, it, it, it it's never been easier as opposed to like just record stuff and because you never know like who may you know who may benefit from it or who may see it. You know, um, one of the um, you know one of the um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. Oh yeah, uh, ba- basically the, the cool thing about it, or the way to really get into that headspace, it's an exercise that we do all the time, hoping that it will come true one day. But um, imagine if Netflix were to give, uh, let, let's say we're all the same company, right? Imagine if Netflix were to give us a call and say, "Hey, congrats, guys! You guys are going to do the show, let's say the documentary on uh, on X, or like let's say on uh, this specific sector, or or or." lens of, of let's say accounting so to speak um and here you go let us know what you come up with you have like a month to figure out like a 10 episode let's say plan for example um like how cool would that be because ultimately it, it instantly you guys probably already got ideas right away it's like oh well if we're, if we're talking netflix then and i'm gonna do it this way as opposed to that way um as opposed to thinking thinking of it as a webinar or like an info session or anything like that think of it genuinely as an episode seasons you know uh cast crew guests uh storyline plot all the all the all the stuff that uh that you guys already like you know know and love and i mean the cool thing about creating shows as well is that you could really really have fun with it in terms of have fun with it but also for the purpose also of making it super effective in terms of doing something like a talk show uh, like a video talk show podcast kind of like the one that we're doing right now but beyond that imagine doing this is really sick in my opinion Imagine doing uh, like a documentary where you as a company start off with one golden question. Okay. If you think of like Tiger King, for example, think of one, start with one golden question and then you set off on a freaking adventure to answer this question on your journey, crossing paths with different customers, different prospects, different thought leaders at the end of the series. And you really have to watch the whole series to figure out what happens kind of like why I'm watching Suits, you know, season eight right now. It's, it's, the story's still not over. Um, at the very end of it, you realize, you know what, this is amazing. And you, and you just come up with this amazing conclusion sort of at the end. Beyond that, you can also create like reaction video series. I mean, um, and this could very easily be done in the B2B space. So we talked about video podcasts. We talked about a documentary series. And you could do this with Zoom. I mean, uh, using smartphones, you could use your smartphone selfie camera this is complete. All we're, we're talking about, guys, is completely free. You use your smart, your selfie smartphone camera, um, you know, which can very quickly upgrade the sort of like you know built-in webcam uh, that people may may have. It's a very quick way to kind of replace that. But beyond that, as well, you know, as I, as I was saying, reaction video series, uh, looking at things that are happening in the market and really reacting to it. It could be reading the news and filming yourself reacting to the news, or some you know some new like I don't know. Um, yeah, like a new like industry piece of information and you're reacting to it uh, and you do it in one take so that it's fresh and authentic as such. Um, you know what I mean? So there's so many different types of shows uh, to create. And even within each one of those, are we going to do a formal video podcast show or are we going to do something that's more um, casual and entertaining? Are we going to do the kind of show that asks the questions that nobody else is willing to ask, the elephant in the room kind of questions? Are we going to do something that is hilarious, but in a way, is also the most uh, uh, well-researched thing, you know, like there's so many different ways to, to, to frame that, but I just love shows so much, as you can see, because it's something that we all are familiar with. We all have our favorite shows. And when we go to work nine to five on Monday, you know, Mondays to Fridays, it's just such a fun idea. And our research shows, um, like I actually, re- I wrote a book on this. I'll give you guys um, a link so that anyone who's watching the episode can get it for free. But in the book, we talked about how better off businesses are who create series because it's not just a random blog or a random video. You're really telling people, hey, welcome to my restaurant. Here's a set menu. We we already have a program for you. We're going to go through the program. We're going to go through the process as such. Love every every part of that. Mark, this is what I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking we're going to film you around the office. You might be the David Brent of this uh, situation <laughs> it's here. It's been done, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the office. Okay. Anyway, uh, no, I love all that. So we got to think, when we're, even when we're talking about this, uh, Kareem, because we even, we're, we're trying to grow our, our following on uh, YouTube. We kind of had a, a soft launch uh, a while ago, 
but never really put any effort in there. This week, really, we're getting going there. So I'm trying to learn about uh, like making series and stuff like that. Um, so I love the idea of having kind of one golden question that we're going to go figure out. Um, even with the, the whatever 25 uh, podcasts that we've done, there's little nuggets in all of these that we could maybe string together to answer these kind of questions in a three-part series or something like that or, or, or more. So there's even there's other stuff that we can do there. Uh, I love the idea of um, the reacting to news. And this is something, you know, I, I thought about as well because, you know, in the podcast space, if there's things that are trending and stuff like that, uh, like remember the, the Joe Rogan thing with uh, Spotify with 100 million and stuff like that, a lot of people that I watch on YouTube had a reaction to that. And I, d- I thought about doing it, but I did. I just couldn't. Do you know, for for all the uh, the podcasting that I do, I'm still a little bit of an introvert, maybe like yourself. And I just <laughs> Mark's laughing because he doesn't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean is, on my there's a difference between me and Mark sitting in a room with uh, three cameras or four cameras, like we used to do when we started, um, and actually just staring down the camera on your own. Yeah, it's, it's a skill set in itself. It's weird for sure, but yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. But, you get used to it though. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, cool. And uh, thanks for, very much for the, for the book shout out as well. We're going to put that in the show notes as well. What's the, na- what's the name of the book? The uh, book is called, one sec. It's, um, it's called the Original Series. Um, all the sales we do on Amazon, uh, it's pretty much me buying it for other people. So <laughs> more than happy to, <laughs> to, to put up a, a private link for you guys, for, for anyone who's, who, you know, who, who checks out your show for sure. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's just something that, you know, uh, Luke, like to your point, like it's just, it, it could be a bit weird at the beginning at the start. Um, you know, like I have a camera hooked up right now. I'm looking at the camera, but after some time you just start to, you know, to just get into the, into the swing of it. And, um, there's an amazing book uh, by Adam Grant called Originals, and he talks about um, like what it takes to really make someone original or, or for all the people that we think are originals, like a Beethoven or like Steve Jobs or what have you. He did some study on like, you know, what, what are many of the things that they would have in common. And one of them was the fact that they focus more on quant- my favorite one by far. They focus more on quantity over quality. Um, I forget the uh, exact stats and I hope I'm not messing this up, but I think uh, someone like Beethoven, for example, like one of the most, you know, pro- prolific, like insane, you know, like classical composers. Uh, and yet essentially like his critical kind of success was, um, you know, just only a couple of songs, but, oh, sorry, only a couple of uh, symphonies, uh, you know, but he's done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, as you may imagine. But to get to whatever it was, you know, like the, the Beethoven's like Fifth Symphony, you know, like a timeless classic or any of the other ones that, that he's done <laughs> that I don't know, um, you know, you have to go through that. So the quantity piece um, really breeds quality. And the last thing I'll say about this is, um, I don't know this person, but he's a very famous YouTuber. His name is Roberto Blake. Uh, one time I was feeling down. I didn't feel like creating videos. I felt like all my videos suck anyway. I was like, let me just search like, okay, video creation, like motivation, I, something like that, you know? And I came across this guy's video and he wrote, and the video was called um, the 100, 100 Crappy Videos Challenge, something synonymous with that. And this guy is like a very like, you know, prolific, established like YouTube influencer. And he was saying, guys, I'm going to give you a challenge. Um, look at any of your favorite, um, he, he was talking about YouTube. I would argue this is the case for any writer, any any person doing anything remotely creative. Um, but YouTube is an easy example. Go to one of your favorite YouTubers. Um, we were talking about filtering, you know, price, right? Like low to, low to high. Filter videos from oldest to newest. Just check out the oldest videos and see how terrible some of these were and look at where they were today. And more importantly, compare what they were before and where they are today. And he said that the 100 crappy videos challenges, can you have the discipline to create 100 videos regardless of quality, regardless of engagement, 100 videos, your goal is to get to 100. You don't care how, um, uh, I don't know if we can curse on this show or not, but yeah, you don't know how okay. terrible, you don't know how <laughs> shit these videos, you, you don't care about how bad these videos are. Really, you want to make sure that you're just hitting that number. And he, he assures you then, or what I've gathered from the video is that I bet you by the time you get to 100 videos, 
you would have already had an audience and you would have just automatically gotten better. You can't help it. Like when you learn how to walk, you can't help but get better over time. You're just practicing it too much. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah. Getting wrapped You can in. even see that with the, with, the, with the podcast. And we started out doing it kind of uh, just using different ways of putting it all together. And then we ended up realizing that that wasn't the way to do it. And we just went and done it properly and bought a roadcaster, proper equipment, nice. learned how to do the intros properly, even with YouTube, even, even with my art. If, I, if I'm to look at my first at age 18, some of my first paintings compared to now, I can't, I can't even do it. Like I, and people are still very happy with them and, and they love them, but I, I kind of, I can't even look at them because <laughs> those 10,000 hours have to be put in for, to get to where, to where I am now. It's the same with any discipline. Yeah. Um, Martin, do, you, do you remember, do you remember how you started at the beginning and what your impression of your own art was at the start? Um, I, I, I knew I was, I knew I was starting out. I, I was just trying to, trying to learn and, and gradually getting happier and happier, happier with them. But yeah, the first few you're, I, I, you probably wouldn't even show it to anyone, but yeah. then, you know, when someone peeps over your shoulder and says, actually, that's quite good. It does keep you, keep you motivated then. Um, so the, one of the, the interesting things, well, I know Seth Godin's come up a few times on this uh, podcast, but, um, one thing that he really, I watched a video of him just recently. Um, so Mark, you know Seth Godin, you? Yeah. Yeah, the marketing guy. Yeah, yeah the marketing guy. Um, he had a video about, uh, I think, I forget what the exact uh, title was, but it was like, uh, you don't get paid to to come up with stuff. You get paid to ship. So the you get paid for getting your product out there. That's the only time you ever get paid. So, so many people are tinkering with uh, something on the side and never, it's not perfect. So I'm not going to release that. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's kind of like the, the perfect is the enemy of the, the good, you know, so it, yeah. it never actually goes out. So um, I think what Kareem saying, and I think what uh, the example that he was giving was that with the hundred videos is um, it's better to have a hundred decent ones than one or two perfect ones that no one's ever going to see, you know, or that you never actually release. So, uh, just as well for, for my editing skills, Mark, what do you think? <laughs> um, okay. um, We're a good combo. We're a good combination. Yeah. Kareem. So I'm a, I'm a 95% guy. It's come up on the, on the podcast a few times. I like to get things out there. Uh, Mark's the, the, the one, the, the details man. And together we're, we're, uh, we're a great team. A couple of sharks. A couple of, <laughs> couple of sharks there. Um, okay, cool. And, and, and Luke, just, just to add to something um, important that you said just, uh, just a second ago, um, uh, to be honest with you guys, like it's, I don't know if it's the same for you guys or not, but um, it's definitely one of like the, my biggest like pet peeves, you know, um, I'm surrounded by people who are ridiculously talented and have so much potential. Um, and I can't help but wonder, and many times, especially those who are like really close to me, I'd be like, you know, hey man or hey girl like you you have so much talent or potential or whatever it is that you're doing on the side and sometimes they don't even think that much of it when in fact for a random like outside person you can clearly instantly see the value that they would be able to do with that and, and to your point Luke I mean um Don, Don is is my co-founder is the opposite uh uh I'm like done is better than perfect I know he he's also like a, very much so a perfectionist um, but ult- ultimately, you know, perfect, quote unquote, perfection or, or the tendency to be perfect or whatever, like that comes with time anyway. Um, that comes with repetition anyway. It's almost like, um, you know, not to speak too much about fitness because that's not my area. But like, let's say it's like spending all week researching the perfect whatever, like bicep curl. And you go in there and your technique is fucking like perfect. Uh, but yeah, you just do like, you know, let's say one or, or like one set and you're done, you know, uh, <laughs> as opposed to like, you know what, listen, like I'll get better with time. Let me just get my, my mind, uh, myself overall, like just more, uh, accustomed to it. And I feel like, um, back on, back to the point of, of HubSpot, like even in HubSpot, HubSpot's where I've met man, like some of the most talented people uh, in my life. And a lot of them have amazing, amazing, um, you know, side hustles and just like hobbies in general, just things that they really care about. And, um, you know, you don't have to like fully like make an insane shift to like, to like jump ship fully, I think in HubSpot and a lot of other like, um, similar culture companies, 
they don't only allow you to do that, but they actually encourage you to have your own kind of like side projects and to really use that as an opportunity to grow yourself as a person. Who knows? You might actually teach HubSpot or said company something along the way. So there's really nothing to lose, especially now, man, like when everyone's sitting at home, you know? 100%. And I think, Kareem, we're on the same page when it comes to that. Mark, I've told you this before. You've, we've had people on the podcast before who are on the, in their own business now or whatever. But I don't know how many people I've, I've talked to in HubSpot in the coffee room saying, you need to get out of here. This is your, this is your chance. What are you doing? There's the door over there. Go, go. You're, you're, you're too talented for this. Or, you know, you should be doing your own thing. I've said that to so many people. Then go back to my desk. You know what I mean, Mark? But uh, the no, I, one person I think that... on the podcast who said that as well. <laughs> at one stage, Kareem, uh, the two of them are sitting in here in Greystone Studios, um, and it came up that I was always encouraging them to quit their their day job and start their their business and then they realized that i had said that to both of them at the same time and then they were like luke what did that? he said that to me as well you know <laughs> uh, uh, yes. anyway, um, no so i think i think i think so many people have so many good ideas and even hone their product and start to get it out to the market but the biggest hurdle and stumbling block for is is actually how do you get it to the, to the market how do you get your, your excellent YouTube video that you've, you've made or series that you've made. How do you get that to more than your family looking at it? Um, and then also in business for yourself, how did you get your actual product out to the market? Did you do much mapping of the market? How do you get things up and running? So it doesn't feel like you're, yeah. you're, you know, pissing in the wind. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, there's always going to be a degree of that. Okay. Like in the beginning, but after a while, uh, you just start with what you have. Um, there's, there's a quote that I, that I absolutely love. I think my, uh, my wife told me that one because she loves uh, <laughs> Ikea. But like in Ikea, they have that because we're in a tiny apartment, right? So uh, there's a quote in Ikea that says, because Ikea is trying to sell more furniture, right? So what they say is, listen, like unlimited, uh, sorry, uh, limited space, unlimited creativity, okay? And so it's like, hey, the fact that you're in a small place, that's perfect. That's, man, like that's how all the creativity comes, you know? And so I, I, would, I would echo that. It's become like a maxim of like my life, you know, in terms of like, okay, limited resources, right. Well, what can we do? Well, who do I know? Well, I know my now past colleagues. I have my friends. I have my family. My family have friends. My, uh, I'm not saying this is necessarily what we did specifically, yeah. but I'm just theoretically um, uh, people that, that were always like good friends of ours, but there was never really a chance for us to work together. But now I've put myself in a position to, let's say, start a business. And all of a sudden, those people are actually the perfect people to give me advice or maybe help facilitate warm intros uh, to me as such. And the degree to which you can give more value more, give more value, yeah, give more value upfront, the more you can kind of bank in uh, currency or like mm -hmm. kind of like deposit currency for yourself. Uh, it's obviously not that mathematical, but like the more you kind of give first, the better you will be just naturally. And even like mindset wise, like you won't feel too bad about asking for something. If you already know that you've already done 10 X that for maybe someone you're like, listen, yeah. man, like all I'm asking for is it'd be awesome if you can do a quick intro and you'll be surprised. You'll be like, not only will I do an intro, but I'm going to do these two other things that you need that you didn't even think of. And one mm -hmm. of the easiest ways, again, going back to the show thing to really give value and to build a freaking vehicle for giving value is to start a show because it's free and because people are people are are, are people in the sense that no one's going to stand up and say look how great i am however if someone uh has the courtesy of inviting them onto the show and they're asking questions or whatever like it's a it's an opportunity for you to low-key kind of showcase what you know or, or, or all that you know and people mm -hmm. will love you for it you know and so doing that is a great way to build up relationships um and, and one of two things will happen. Either they'll put in a good word for you just because people are people and they like to reciprocate. They'll put in a good word for you or who knows, maybe that very person who was on the show, they're like, you know what? We actually have, you know, X problem right now. It's costing us uh, 10 grand and you guys are could potentially, you know, with your solution, it could be a lot cheaper than the 10 grand we're already losing. So yeah. let's do it. Let's, let's, let's talk about that, for example, you know? So it really starts with, you know, with the, your immediate network to, to answer your question mark. And then from there, looking at how you can strategically give as much as possible in a way that you can sustain that giving. So ideally mm -hmm. this giving is not costing you too much money. 
if you don't have that much money when you're starting out, kind of, kind of like what, what was in my case, what we did have was, well, we just, we had ideas and we had two smartphones that didn't even match. We had an iPhone and an Android. We're like, perfect. Let's do a podcast show. And yeah. uh, we did a show called the, the Spare Room Talks um, in a spare room that we had in my apartment. And that's kind of like how we took off, you know, and, and you, can, you can tell that one mic was slightly better than the other mic and one camera was slightly better than the other camera, uh, you know, but we, we found our way over time, I guess. That's really great. Cool. No, that makes sense. I think uh, karma is a, is a real thing. Um, so I mean, you should be doing that. Like I, I'd advise anybody, say an 18 year old, you know, start, uh, you know, not, not work for free, but, you know, offer help people when you can, and it'll come back to you time and time again, really without, you know, overdoing it. And, you know, some people probably overdo it and do too much and don't get anything in return. You have to be sensible about it, but in life in general, I think it's, it's a good idea. It doesn't cost them. It's, it's something that I think about quite a lot as well because I was in the direct sales team for, you know, whatever, three years or so. Um, and because of the monthly targets, uh, because of the, the, the constant need for more uh, revenue, not later, but now, um, I think that we, um, maybe not we, but me uh, in particular, there, there was a lot of opportunity for, to, to build long-term relationships. And when it's not your own business, you're not going to see, you may not see that value six months from now because that account will be rotated to someone else. Or, so you need to execute it now. Right. So I think that when you have your own business, it allows you to maybe, uh, you know, expand through, through karma and that, that way, mm. it's a nice way to expand through karma. That might be the title of this show. Hey, Mark, what's the, uh, what's the, what's the story with those, uh, those lightning round questions here? We're, we're pushing are, an hour already. Are we there already? Jeez. Yeah. Uh, I, I just wanted to, to talk about the YouTube channel. Um, is Kareem, is, is that a vehicle that you've looked at, uh, you know, for to get the series out, is that where you'd put put a series, or is it internally? You know, is it be business to business, sending sending in the videos that way? What what way? What's the actual platform of getting the series out to people? Yeah, I think um, you know, uh, this is an easy answer, but like in in every way, shape, and form, really, um, especially when you start to chop up the content and repurpose it as such. But whatever channels m- matter most to your to your to your audience, you know, um, there's always going to be the staples for people who are in B2B, which is obviously, um, you know, your, your LinkedIn, right. Your uh, mm-hmm. YouTube and just your website as well. Um, and beyond that, you can keep adding more to those uh, as you go, but also like just noticing trends and seeing what type of content, like all these channels are very successful, um, ha- have made a lot of people successful, so to speak but it's important to really understand the culture. Um, behind, I guess something Gary Vee talks about a lot, right? In his book, uh, uh, Job, 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 Right Hook, uh, he talks about, you can't just copy paste content. Like you have to really do something that's culturally attuned to a LinkedIn or sarcastic enough for a Twitter or uh, let's say visually appealing enough for a YouTube, you know, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, I don't. Does does that answer your question? Yeah, no, it does. Uh, for for your for the content when you when you're cutting splicing everything up, where where are you putting it? Is it say for this say this podcast for example, a long form podcast? Would you transcribe that to a blog? Would you, you know, put it on squared images quotes from it from Instagram? Uh, you know, what way would you do it t- typically? Yeah, that's a great point. So first of all. Um, yeah, like I, I would just look at all the parts that stood out to me. So, you know, for example, the, uh, the part where Luke said, you know, like, for example, the importance of really uh, building, you know, the trade-off really between building like long-term relationships um, versus, you know, doing something in the moment and really leaving so much more value left on the table. Or, you know, the, the part, Mark, that you were talking about, you know, how, you know, in, in any artistic endeavor, like you really want to start with whatever level you have right now. And just see that you're getting, you know, incrementally happier and happier over time and seeing that, you know, eventually you'll be in a place where you're very happy to, to kind of stay permanently. I would kind of take these two clips and I would find a way to say, first of all, what is the content being shared? Is it visual content? Is it, um, is there a visual reference? Is there, um, you know, it, it, like what it makes better sense as like an image quote. And I can say XXX said Luke, for example, and this becomes an image quote or if it's something that was more visual or just more, let's say we want to do something more dynamic overall, we can say, 
okay, let's take, you know, uh, like March Smart and figure out how to make that as like a one minute, like subtitled video. And by the way, th this, th this, what we're talking about right now is an art until you have enough data to make it more scientific. But ultimately it's an art. You just get a feel for it and decide, you know what, that'd be a really cool quote. Or you know what, that'd be a really cool video by itself. Um, last but not least would be creating an article off of the, the video. Um, our, like what, what we say even to like brands that we work with is don't transcribe the whole thing because I mean, you know, uh, that's what the video is for. Rather find a, a way to really create something new out of, it. for example, taking all like the four or five like top highlight points and find a way to really create a brand new blog post that's based on these things that were discussed within the, uh, the video. So it really depends on the, the nugget that, that is in question, the nugget in question, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and really figuring out what's the best way to, to serve that nugget, right? Baked or fried. Yeah. And what, out, of, out of interest, what's the most popular, and I, there's probably no one answer to this, but what generally is the most popular um, kind of media that, that people consume? Is it visual? Is it, is it, you know, blah, is it reading? Is it audio? I'd say... Yeah. I don't know, I'd hazard a guess and say video. Yeah, 100%, um, especially now in COVID when everyone is uh, sitting at home and there's less commuting happening overall. Mm. Uh, videos and specifically short subtitled uh, video snippets. Um, I was speaking to a friend of mine uh, who's, who's a marketing director and she was saying that their company have done some um, re really amazing research actually recently and they found that brands, uh, pe people are actually spending a lot more time consuming bite-sized content pieces than consuming like longer, like kind of like eBooks and like really like heavy dry stuff. Um, and the time that the total time they spend uh, consuming the small bite-sized content, they could have finished like two or three eBooks in that anyway, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, you know, let's say an eBook will take, I don't know, like 30 minutes to get through, uh, or you can have this one minute clip. And sometimes, you know, they will watch all these small clips and they end up spend watching hours and hours of this content because, you know, time just flies and it's just easy to, to consume that content. It's very bite-sized. It's very easy to, you know, to, to consume. And it's a content that, that reads itself to you. I don't have yeah. to turn sound on. I don't have to like prepare myself and do all this stuff. Like the content literally reads itself, mm. narrates itself to me. And um, even from our stats and like the, the folks that we work with, like by far we found that like subtitled micro content videos are the best kind right now. Yeah. I think that's, that's definitely what people, what people want, whether it's the best for them. I I'd, I'd probably would disagree. I'd say reading a book, you're going to actually consume that better. It's kind of like the batch work patchwork type of thing. If you're patchwork and you know, 51 minute clips, are you really learning anything that's going to stay with you as opposed to reading one book on a topic? Um, but look, human nature is human nature. Yeah. Mark, I think, yeah. I think Go we're putting, I was going to say that me and Mark for the, for the longest time we were putting out uh, videos that, you know, oh, they're pretty, you know, an hour and 50 minutes, you know, and everyone else is uh, reading or sorry, everyone else is, is watching kind of one minute, two minute clips. And we're like, no, let's, let's give them what they don't, uh, you know, <laughs> what we want them, <laughs> what we want to, you know, but uh, no, it's, we're, we're definitely getting better at that. Uh, Kareem, um, yeah, we, we usually, uh, uh, wrap up the the podcast with a, a kind of a, a lightning lightning rounds wrong way, but kind of quick fire questions, but they don't need quick fire answers. Um, we just love to get people's perspective uh, on a certain elements, and we we do this with a lot of our uh, a lot of our guests, and then we find these really interesting um, kind of juxtapositions or you know uh, differences with the way uh, people answer them. So there's also uh, trends, interesting trends. Yeah, there is. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah. we'd love uh, to dig into that with you if you've got uh, another five minutes there. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. What's your favorite social media and why? Uh, LinkedIn, because I feel like I'm not wasting my time. <laughs> Great answer. Interesting. Okay. Um, what's the best business idea you never acted upon? The best business idea, and I guess, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, probably up, up for, ah, Okay, uh, I had this. Um, I had this amazing. <laughs> what, what I thought was that was a good idea. Me and a me and a friend of mine actually from HubSpot. Shout out uh, Andreas, but he's actually moved on from uh, from HubSpot uh, since then. But we've had this idea to uh, create like a networking networking events that take place on a boat. 
So you get on a boat, it's like very kind of bespoke groups, like, I don't know, for 15 people max, like top level execs, and you kind of, you know, get to meet each other in like a different setting. Um, but we realized we need to be in a place that's like um, very, uh, very warm <laughs> and, uh, and like just more, more like, I don't know, like boat friendly from uh, like I've, I've started, I, I have, I have um, a motorboat license here in, in, in Ireland. Oh, cool. But what I learned is that if you want to become an amazing sailor, Ireland is the perfect place to be because if you can do Ireland, you can do anywhere. However, like for people who are not um, up for like right all the waves and all that, like they want something more relaxing. We just figured we'll just have to wait till we move to Barcelona or somewhere else, you know? Yeah. What was the reasoning for having it on the, on, on the boat as opposed to... Or, apart from all the possible net puns about networking. but <laughs> Yeah, because um, we, we wanted to make enough money to buy a boat. And we thought, okay, let's reverse engineer. How much is a boat? Okay, you know, uh, it's X amount, you know, and then how do we get to that money? And then in our ideation, we were like, you know, it'd be cool. And like poetic justice in the same time is if we do, if we make our money on boats and then we realize it's a very competitive space, uh, but we did have a shot uh with the with the actually no we, i don't think we did no because we, we only did one group and we paid for it ourselves so <laughs> there wasn't really much opportunity there but i think we might revisit it if we move somewhere you know that's more where the waves are a bit calmer i suppose but that's the best idea that we've never acted upon <laughs> Great. Um, um like i think you asked why is it on a boat i mean boats that that sells itself would you go to a network event in a in an old restaurant or something or do you want to go out on a yacht anyway next question that's what the type of boat yeah a fishing boat maybe wouldn't be as good yeah, yeah. <laughs> um what time do you get up at in the morning and what time do you go to sleep uh try and get up at uh at half six in the morning and try to go to bed uh just before midnight well wow, it's a long day um if you could do business anywhere in the world where would it be uh Ireland. somewhere on cam sees yeah. What's that? Somewhere with Cam C's. <laughs> uh, if it was for the other business, then definitely. Uh, otherwise, no, Ireland is, is the place to be for sure. Okay. How much money is enough money? Uh, man, I should have prepared for these questions. Um, how much money there's is no, enough? There's no right answer. There, there is probably no answer. but I think, I think um, how much money is enough money? Uh, I think, yeah, I think just once you have, uh, once you have, like, uh, in my case, once you have a house, a boat, uh, a dog, <laughs> and all your basic necessities looked after, all your, like, immediate family and friends looked after, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's enough money, you know, in no particular order, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> boat <Yeah>. first. <laughs> boat, first. Boat, boat, yeah. <laughs> Just jump in there, Mark. What do you think? Uh, what? How much money is enough money? You always asking that question. What, what, I'm going to flip the flip, flip the table in here. What are you thinking? Um, I would. I would say it depends on where you live. You sure. know, a million a million euro or dollars is is going to be very different for for different depending on what country you're in, standard of living. Um, for me, it always comes back to like safety and health, mm. and just. God knows what will happen to people that you love and just to be able to look after them if the worst possible thing happened to multiple people that you love would be something that kind of sticks out to me as opposed to buying yachts and Ferraris and stuff like that. That'd be nice as well. But like that never comes into my head. It's all to do with comfort, safety, being happy day to day, being able to create without having to worry about making money would be nice. So like whether it's painting or doing podcasts and for like Joe Rogan probably lives the dream. He does what he wants when he wants, uh, it seems. Um, and he's probably worth, I don't know what <laughs> a lot now anyway. So yeah. for me, it's actually quite high. It's uh, it's actually quite high. And I'd like to give back to, to other people as opposed to having to, uh, take. So probably yeah. at least 10 million. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm gonna steal Mark's answer there as well. If that's all right, yeah. let's have ten million each and uh, a couple more questions here, and then we'll <laughs> throw it back. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, is it who you know or what you know? Oh, uh, who you know, one thousand percent. Oh, nice. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. I read. I read. I read. Um, I don't know how lightning fire these are. If you want me to elaborate, or no, not. you can elaborate for sure. Oh, sure. fantastic. Okay, cool. There's an amazing guy I came across recently. His name is uh, Dan Sullivan. He is the. Uh, he runs a company called big company called Strategic Coach. It's like a coaching program, uh, and he comes up with these insanely simple but insanely powerful concepts. And the one that's by far my favorite is the concept that he created or popularized called "Who, Not How." So anytime the three of us set our goal together. We're like, okay, step one, let's, let's figure out the goal. Step two, it's like, right, how are we going to do that? And he says, why, why are you think why your mentality is wrong? Like, why are we thinking how, when we could think of who there's a lot of people, let's say who know how to code. I don't need to learn how to code. You know, um, like we just finished an AI platform that we're going to launch uh, soon. Like, I don't know how to code. My co-founder doesn't know how to code. So should we learn how to do that or should we find the who for that? Or like, let's say, you know, I don't know how to sell. Should I do that myself or should I find the who who could do that? Because in his research, they find, let's say you're so clever. Let's say you're so smart and you want to do do everything by yourself. On average, uh, I forgot the the specific age, but he said like everybody gets to a certain uh, age number where just objectively speaking, um, your knowledge is not as up to date as some others who are barely just starting their careers right now and technology trends and, and, and just, you know, upskilling trends and what have you. So uh, at one point, your knowledge will become outdated. The way to really stay in the game is to associate yourselves with a lot of who's that could really carry you forward. And so your job could really just become, let me dream what I want to dream and let me find the who's who are equally passionate about this and who would love to take that on as a challenge. And then I can go on to the next kind of dream and find the next who for it. Kareem, that's a fabulous answer. Um, we're really going to dig into that one. We love that at the shark pod. Uh, it's like, kind of like that uh, <laughs> in the Simpsons when uh, Homer is like, can't somebody else do it? Let's keep that in mind. One more, one more uh, shout out here. Mark. Okay, two more. Two more. If you could advise somebody to learn one skill, what would it be? Maybe the 18 year old, uh, Kareem, one skill that you found be- yeah. beneficial. So this is the second thing I'm going to steal from you, Mark. Uh, just the skill of being able to give, uh, to give at scale, you know what I mean? And giving at scale doesn't, it's not limited to like, let's say donating money. A lot of people think give means donate. Give could be introducing people to each other, get really good at connecting the dots and being like, Oh, this person could totally benefit from, from meeting this person. Or, uh, again, the show thing, right. Or for example, um, doing what Adam Grant and his book, Give and Take, another amazing book called uh, Five Minute Favors. Like, how can I do like just quick five minute favors that add so much value, a quick email intro here, a quick in-person intro there. Because if you can become a giver, so to speak, um, you really, you know, uh, re- genuinely set yourself up for success and you really set yourself up to be like, you know, like the Don, like the Godfather, like, yo, I helped so many people out and it, this is not how you think of it, but like, bear with me. Like, like you just look around and you're like, all these people I've helped and it feels great. It's not even about getting something back. It's especially not about getting something back. It's just about, I, I just feel like I'm not useless. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 No, I, great answer. I get that hundred percent. Like sometimes I, I really like to refer people for, for jobs in HubSpot or in my places that I worked for before. Nice before um like in hope you get a, a nice little bonus but it's not going to be life-changing you know but you're really making an impact on people's lives and mark kind of does this for a living so i don't want to step on his toes here but uh I, I really like doing that and that i think that's what you're talking about there where like that's that's like a that's one small favor that reverberates in their life do you know what i mean so it's kind of what did it cost me i wrote a blurb for them and put in their cv type of thing uh, i really yeah, like yeah, that Okay, last one, and I'm sure you'll have a great answer for this. Maybe it might be difficult for you, but what book would you recommend uh, to to people? Uh, one of my favorite books these days, guys, is uh, um, uh, it's it's a it's a book called uh, "The Obstacle Is the Way" by uh, Ryan Holiday. Um, so a lot of people may know Ryan Holiday. He's like this modern, like stoic kind of writer. But yeah, the book, uh, The Obstacle is the Way, is, uh, is an amazing book because it talks about how you can succeed, uh, not, not, just, okay, not just despite obstacles being in your way, but thanks to these obstacles. Matter of fact, if the obstacles weren't there, you would have been worse off. But thanks to these obstacles, you are now better off. 
So he talks about that in a, in a lot more structured way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a phenomenal book. Um, me and my friend, we have a, a tiny podcast where we review like books that are like self-help books that we really like. And we keep, we're struggling right now because we're like 15 episodes in and we can't help but go back to that book we did in episode two. So yeah. like it's, it's, uh, it's an amazing book. And I think these days, hopefully people will find value in it because um, I try and remind myself of it every day. You know, like anytime you come across an obstacle, you're like, you know what? How can I be clever here or whatever and be like, and, and get to a stage where I can make that thing work against itself or use it as a, as a way to really, um, you know, I don't have to go through it. Maybe I go to the left of it or to the right of it, you know? So um, I'm not doing the book justice. You really have to check it out, but that's the book that I would recommend for sure. Oh, it sounds okay. great. I think that's really interesting. Well, I think he, I don't think I've read, I don't know if I've read anything by him, uh, but I know that he's uh, a big, like I said, kind of in the Stoic scene or the Stoic yeah. uh, author so it's really cool uh kareem we had a, a great time having a chat with you today all about video all about entrepreneurship um where can people find out more about what you're doing uh i know you've got the, the book and all that type of stuff but is there a, a handle that you have on the on the socials um yeah i guess just on linkedin uh kareem mustafa uh linkedin and google hopefully that will come up and Prime Tech. Um, that's my main one anyway uh and yeah our company yeah tribe tactics.com Yep. And uh, we, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Thanks very much for, for hanging out with us today. Really, really interesting. And I know it's uh, during the week and I know you're, uh, it's late in the day. So thanks very much for your time. Uh, Mark, we'll, we'll chat soon. I'm just going to hit the record or the end. Thank you guys. Thank you.